Hello, puppies and kittens. Welcome to another episode of Blasphemer's Bible, uh, our, our little set of Bible lessons for people who just don't buy it. Uh, and we have our, our assembled crew. Um, as my wife joins this group yet? There she is. Okay, so um, one moment. Yep. Did you got her? There she is. All right, so um, we finally got up. We did Genesis 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, that's where we're at. We're with Gen one, two, three. We're now on four, and we're gonna we're gonna find out some interesting stuff. Lawrence, do you want to start us off? You are you are the closest thing we have to an expert at the moment. <laughs> you you said uh, you have a degree <laughs> in religious studies. No, no, no. I, I was uh, saying earlier that I'm working towards my degree in religious studies. Okay. Uh, yeah. So wait, I'm not sure. Did you want us to do the introductions or? That you take, you, you go as you will. Okay. Uh, I guess if you haven't heard of me, uh, my name is Lawrence. I run the channel Milwaukee Atheists. Uh, we do Bible studies every Sunday, and we do apocryphal slash pseudepigraphal readings every Friday. Uh, and right now we are, I think tomorrow, we are nearing the end of John. Uh, so we're almost done. We're getting there. Uh, I, in, in the past, I don't know, seven years, I've been studying the Bible academically, uh, initially on my own. And then Aaron convinced me to go back to school for it. Uh, so I'm doing that and I'm miserable. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> it was rather like when I, when I went into, uh, I walked into a college campus trying to get a, uh, to, to sign up for a Microsoft certification certificate kind of a thing and i accidentally walked into the wrong building i walked into the science building because i didn't know the campus and i found myself in front of a paleo display and i realized that i knew all the fossils i knew that i knew the identities of all the scientists involved i knew what the controversies the stories behind all of them and i thought why am i getting an mcse degree why am i not getting a science degree so changed my direction so a similar story i think uh, yeah, uh, probably in a different direction, though, because my initial degree was uh, astrophysics. Uh, I was like, <laughs> I don't want to do math for the rest of my life. So Aww. I decided to do something else. <laughs> uh, yeah. So either way, while uh, I, I while in school, I have learned ancient Greek, which does help with the New Testament a lot. Uh, it helps with, you know, plenty of other ancient texts, too. Uh doesn't help too much with the Old Testament. I can read the Septuagint, but that's about it. Uh, so I, I don't know the Hebrew. Sorry, guys. Uh, I wish I did. Uh, that is that is next on my list of languages to learn that I can't use in everyday life. So, uh, yeah, very excited to get into Chapter 4. All right. Uh, am I going to be reading these, or do, um, should I start reading then? Yes, yeah, start and reading on. Okay. You have the All best right. Yahweh voice. <laughs> <laughs> and this one opens up nice and moist. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Adam made love to his wife Eve. Hmm. Hmm. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And she said, uh, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. She gave birth to a whole man. Uh, later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the, the, of the soil as an offering to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of his firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to comment on this already. So so God is showing favoritism. It's obvious that that uh, Cain and Abel represent something. We're not talking about real people here. We're still in metaphor land. And yeah. uh, that, that God doesn't like the fact that Cain actually had to do more work mm -hmm. to get his, his bounty by a lot than Abel did. I mean, Abel just let sheep fuck that's pretty much what he <laughs> did but, you know, but Cain had to do all of this work and so uh -huh. Cain had to you know produce all this bounty but there was a hell of a lot of work actually involved in that and so all Abel did 
was kill sheep. Well, yeah. I think it proves that God likes murder and God he's not a vegetarian. Does. Yeah, God apparently does like murder. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, throughout the uh, pretty much the entirety <laughs> of the Old Testament, uh, God loves, loves meat. He loves the smell of meat. Uh, it is mentioned multiple times. Uh, that's his favorite kind of sacrifice, uh, which is why at the temple uh, they would have sacrificed a whole bunch of animals instead of a whole bunch of fruits. Um, yeah. So, because when you, it's not like uh, if you read through the Deuteronomistic history, uh, and even once we get into uh, Leviticus, uh, we'll see that there is a huge uh emphasis on the priesthood uh and like kind of like the the tax that they they mm. get from each yeah. sacrifice so they get a portion of every sacrifice um and of course they would have wanted to eat uh eat meat uh but they also wanted to you know give something to god so they would they would burn these things uh and in in that like if i i don't think there was was a way for them to uh, to sacrifice or bring as an offer uh, fruit in a way that they could both somehow give it to God and to themselves. Uh, and I think the fact that this was a uh, a community that was very centered around the around. Uh, farming of animals uh, that would have been the thing that they would have wanted to give over uh, when it came to, you know, how important, you know, uh, fruits and veggies were for them. Uh, not, uh, not as much um, because <clears throat> really early on, they would have been still semi nomadic uh, mm -hmm. and you can take the animals with you. Yeah. It's hard to take a field with you. Well, the yeah. stories of Abraham include a lot of herding, and I, yeah, I, we we were talking before. I mentioned Inanna. We've brought her up several times, as um, her tales being part of the mythos that inspired a lot of these tales, or potentially common source, whatever. Um, in her, in one of her earliest stories, when she's getting married there's this argument between her and her intended husband, whose name I am going to horrifically butcher, Dumuzid. Um, yeah, I'm That's going to be the name of my next child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, he is a, a herder, a sheep herder god, and she's like, no, I want to marry a farmer. And they have this argument back and forth, and, uh, you know, he will bring me beer. Well, I will bring you cream. And um, there, you know, there have been some scholars and some perspectives that have said that the Garden of Eden and the loss of innocence and the fruit was all very, you know, sexual innuendo. Um, I don't know if that's the case in Genesis. I don't really read it like that. But in this case, in the case of Inanna, it is very much like that. Like it is the 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 veneer is paper thin. It's like reading Song of Psalms, but more. It's like, I will pour my cream into your furrows. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we get it. I'm using that line. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have read, before I started criticizing this thing, I should have read the next line. <clears throat> then oh, the Lord sorry. said to Cain, why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But you do not do what is right. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, and you must rule, but you must rule over it. Excuse me. Yeah. He didn't sin. No. He did exactly yeah. what he was supposed to do. He, he worked harder than Abel did. He was a much better person than Abel was because he's not killing his animals. Oh. And, and yet God is shitting on him. Does. Yeah, at this point, there's no laws of actually, and you don't have any, any of the laws given. Yeah. And you just have to infer, based on what happened, that God prefers animal sacrifices. It's, they had, they like to try to, any traditions that they had, they like to try to extend them back and say, mm -hmm. look, 
this is established because it extends right back to this point. And that's essentially what this story is for. It's just to say God likes his barbecue. I mean, yeah, evidently. Yeah. I, I can't fault the love of barbecue. But even <laughs> still, it mentions Cain first and then Abel. So there was no order to give a sacrifice. It's like they yeah. both totally just brought up sacrifices because they were into him. And Cain apparently, like, Cain might have gone first. It might have been his idea. And then God treated him like dirt. So. And then do we need to mention that God doesn't need a damn sacrifice? You know what? He, he even, uh, there are biblical books which mention that uh, God prefers, you know, uh, and I'm speaking of Old Testament here, uh, hmm. that God prefers when people, uh, like he does, he doesn't just want the sacrifice. He wants you know you to sacrifice with like you know pure of heart. Uh, so he the sacrifice is secondary uh, in in a lot of biblical literature. There's a I think there's a part in either it's either in Samuel or one of the kings where you actually have I think it's Samuel saying does the Lord, does the Lord delight in sacrifices. And it's like, yes, I've read the fucking book. He definitely <laughs> likes sacrifices. He sacrificed his only son. Yeah. And, and and as a Christian, we all sing songs about blood all the time. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. <laughs> yeah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing because but Christianity the blood is a death cult. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the blood magic is very creepy. All the bathing and drinking and bathing. Don't wash your blood. It's not. <laughs> yeah. To to, to be okay. honest, this this chapter is actually why I regret growing up as a Christian because every single time my mother would have said, "Eat your vegetables," I would say, "Look where it got Cain." <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, I'm not right. telling my niece before that. One. We, before we move on. Uh, Lilith was referring to other uh, cultures that have these uh, origin of the sacrifice myths, and I, it reminds me of uh, Zeus and Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus tricked Zeus by wrapping up bones and making it look glistening with fat, and uh, and then he had a choice. He said, "Okay, Zeus, you choose," and then the other one had all the meat and all the good stuff in it. So he, Zeus. Choose, chose the more the nicer package and that's why in greek sacrifice zeus gets the smoke and the bones and the priests get all the good edible parts oh quite convenient for the priests mm -hmm. yeah. yeah all right so i'm going to read i'm going to continue reading here now cain said to his brother abel let's go out to the field um Okay, so there's nothing built. One guy's a farmer, one guy's a shepherd. They're always in the damn field. Also, this is this is kind of interesting here. Uh, this is a note from uh, Robert Alter. Uh, so the sentence, let us go out in the field. Uh, the sentence is missing in the Masoretic text, but supplied in the Greek, Syriac, and Aramaic versions. Oh, oh is you, so you mean like added to? Well, he, here's the thing. It, it's hard to tell because the Masoretic text... Uh, is is at least the ones we have access to is l kind of late, uh, so uh, like our our Greek versions are uh, older than the Masoretic one, um, at least again the ones that we have access to. Uh, okay. So it was it's it's unclear, but for some reason it is missing in the Masoretic. Yeah, you f you quite often find that where it, it's very hard to place whether or not the text was originally there and moved or whether or not it was added in later it's it's always a guessing game really so, so the while they, unless there's clues mm. so continuing on while they were in the field cain attacked his brother abel and killed him then the lord said to cain hey i'm omniscient i know everything where is your brother abel and yeah. uh, Cain said, I don't know. Uh, am I my brother's keeper? And uh, so he got snippy, sarcastic with God. 
And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out for me to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me out from the land. I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So let's before we start talking about the mark, it's it's necessary that you know Christians often bring up that uh, when before the Ten Commandments were given, people didn't know. Yeah. That murder was bad. They needed God to say murder was bad. Dennis Prager said that if God didn't say that murder is wrong, then murder isn't wrong. Yeah. But when Moses murdered an Egyptian before receiving the Ten Commandments, he buried that Egyptian to hide the body. And run away. Someone tells me he knew he shouldn't have done that. He knew yeah. other people would like frown on this. And here we have Cain, clearly before the Ten Commandments, lying to God to try to conceal his murder. Yeah. It's I don't even get... People... Sorry. <laughs> Go That's ahead. Okay. I don't even get why he killed him. It Just all of a sudden he up and kills him. It doesn't say. I mean, he's probably jealous. jealous. Of what? Like, he won the won the thing with God. No, no. Uh, so, I mean, Abel uh, won the thing with God. Uh, so yeah. Cain was just butthurt about it. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to be mad at you. Know Thank you. Yeah, getting mad at you for it. Um, so, um, yeah, obviously he takes out his his anger on uh, his brother. Uh, and interestingly, so the land of Nod uh, in Hebrew is a cognate with uh, with the word wanderer in verse twelve. So, yeah, yeah that's an interesting, uh, probably etymological thing. Yeah, they they give a lot of um, folk etymologies. Um, in different parts of the Bible. And this section of the text from Genesis 2 to 4, um, it's identified as the Yahwist text. And they especially like using little plays on words and things like that and folk etymologies. And they skip that like in the name. Someone's going to need to help me with this next verse. Cain made love to his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Now, okay. some translations yeah. I've heard <laughs> say that Cain found his wife in the land of Nod, but this translation implies that she could have gone with him. Yeah. Where the, the hell usual, did Cain's wife come from? The usual apologetic is, if you read on to Genesis 5, it says that Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters. Well, it says Adam did. It doesn't mention Eve. So presumably... <laughs> Presumably, it was uh, another one of his, uh, his sisters. Yeah, who remembers being told horrible, horrible justifications for marrying your sisters because, you know, we can't come from monkeys, but dirt and incest is cool. Yeah. Okay, but I ain't paying for two weddings. <laughs> oh, uh, no. So yeah, this is this is obviously like a f- very famous inconsistency. Like, where did he find his, his wife? Um, so the translation that uh, that I have is, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. Um, so the the thing about you know finding this other land is that that's why this origin story should not really be taken literally. Uh, this is. Uh, Perhaps this would have even been an account of one, of one family, of one yeah. race, so to speak. Um, and but they, they fully acknowledge that other people already existed at the time. Uh, so, 
this because yeah they don't do they? Really, they yeah the, when he goes off to to nod uh and he just has a wife um and yeah, he said he it said that he, it seems like he already had a wife he went to nod and knew his wife but it doesn't say that he found his wife in nod it sounds like he he brought her from home his wife is his sister well he wouldn't have uh it doesn't say anything about him having a wife earlier uh yeah but it doesn't it it, it doesn't say that any of these other kids had wives either except obviously their sisters the bible's quite sure, good yeah. at leaving details out um and sometimes you just have to try to infer what it possibly means by it but it's quite common for them to just say they knew their wife without actually mentioning the marriage or anything. Yeah, so what we've got is we have Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve both have two boys. One of them's dead and one of them's gone. And now they have more kids. And Adam had more kids, but we, but Eve didn't because Adam is apparently... Oh, no, Eve is just implied. Remember, she's a woman and therefore a sidekick. And her only function is to bear children in pain because God cursed her because God's a douche. And that's well, that's that's why women so very rarely get names, except if they do something extraordinarily wrong. Yeah, uh -huh. but the Genesis five account, when it gives the genealogy there with all of the with all of the begotten things, that's from the same source as Genesis one, and in that source, it's a case of God created man, male and female. So when it talks about Adam having kids, it can be inferred that he's talking about humans, man as a whole having kids. Well, there's so no, many different be. translations of this. I mean, and when the word race came up a moment ago, I mean, there's, that's a lot of it mm. right there. One of the yeah. interpretations that I've heard is that it wasn't that there were other people that were in the land at the time, that, 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 that Adam and Eve were the first people and everybody else was apes. And so mm -hmm. like, like it, Cain found his wife among the Australopithecine people, maybe. My father Some, said they were cave people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd yeah. quite like That's to so see an adaptation of like Planet of the Apes with Adam and Eve. <laughs> that would be interesting. And uh, then there, there there's another one. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say there are there have been racist teachings over history that have said that the mark of Cain was black skin. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned other humans or apes. Um the woman who started is it seventh day adventism the prophetess she believed that different races of humans came from crossbreeding with different kinds of apes um it there's there's been a lot of horrible racist nonsense that has come out of the concept of the mark of cain um in what i believe was originally just a story dramatizing the war between or sort of war of importance socially between farmers and herdsmen and declaring that God prefers herdsmen because barbecue. On, um, on regarding yes. uh, women doing things wrong, you've got a very special someone in the side chat. Try, check the private chat here. I, I put the message in there. Oh. You might want to read that. All right, let me see. Stephanie Brown uh, says, up until March, I was an ordained minister of a congregation. After I heard you on the Creaky Blinders show, I decided to be honest with myself and left the ministry. Thank you. Wow, that's profound. Thank you for sharing that, Stephanie Brown. That's a lot. Well done, yeah, my humility prevents me from making a proper response to that. I, <laughs> but, but thank you for thank you for sharing that. Now, there's a, there's still more about the the lack of clarity on this interpretation about where Cain got his wife and what this mark was. Uh, when I was 14 and I met with a bunch of Mormon missionaries who were trying to explain their religion, they told me that the mark of the you know the, that would stop people from killing Cain was supposedly this black skin. Yeah. But that's demonstrably not effective in getting people to not kill you. <laughs> Yeah. And plus, plus, God even says that, you know, if you do, uh, if someone does end up killing Cain, they're going to get it back sevenfold. Uh, 
And if it was black skin, oh boy, is that not true? Especially not true. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, oh boy, is that not true? Yeah. So uh, what although the I do, it? I do, I well, the thing is, no one, no one really knows what the mark is uh, aside from it. Yeah. It, it is literally a mark of protection, right? Like that's the only reason he isn't just getting killed randomly. Um, so it is a mark of protection, whatever it is. Uh, but I personally did like uh, Supernatural's interpretation of yeah, it. Yeah, that was quite cool. Yeah, uh, that's why I got a tattoo. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, I saw I saw a a, a, a poll that was released recently that that showed uh, awareness of uh, you know, biblical literature, and it said that of all these different groups, the the ones polled with the highest knowledge of the Bible were the atheists. Definitely. And the, and that Jews came in second, <laughs> and, and that Christians were way down the list. Uh, you know, the general collective of Christians were way down the list, and at, and and subdivided that the lowest group of, uh, on on that was like Hispanic uh-huh. Catholic, uh, which was kind of a surprise to me. But I do remember uh, talking with a his, his Hispanic Catholic once in my youth, and I and I asked if there was any just out of just trying to make conversation. If there was any event in history, if you had a time machine, go back and change any event in history, what would it be? And her answer was, when Eve fucked the snake. <laughs> so that one hit me as a surprise. Uh, and and I, I have since... <clears throat> I have since seen interpretations from uh, the Christian identity, which if nobody knows what that is, that's a, that's a Christian terrorist group whose most famous member was... Uh, uh, Mc, Timothy McVeigh, who blew up the Murrah building in Oklahoma, oh, right? part of the Christian identity, Lord. and and they had a history of of anti-Semitism, particularly they would blow up abortion Christian uh, abortion clinics, but they would also blow up synagogues and things like that. So that's that's the kind of thing that they were into, and and part of their mythology was that the Jewish people came from this illicit union between Eve and the serpent. So, Which is why God blessed them for centuries by choosing them as his special... Okay, fine. You know what? Yeah, that's why they're the chosen people. Yeah, we're, we're not expecting it to make any sense, but just look at the justifications for racism that we get between between Eve and the serpent and, and between uh, uh, Cain and whoever the fuck the people of Land of Nod are, if there are, in fact, people in the Land of Nod. All this yeah. justification. And we, we I hear all the time, or I heard all throughout my youth, that Darwinists were so racist, except when you read Darwin, and he's adamantly not racist. He was always yeah. defending. He, he was always defending the, the the subjugated or the indigenous people. He was always criticizing his own race mm-hmm. for for their their subjugation of all of these other people. Uh, he Darwin was blamed for the genocide in Australia of Aboriginal people, and and yet. Decades before Darwin ever published his theory or even figured out his theory, he went to Australia and that event was already going on before mm-hmm. he got there. And he wrote what a terrible disgrace it was that this was happening. So how could he be blamed for that? But they blame him for it anyway. And then the, yeah. they say that they say that Hitler was a Darwinist when Hitler burned Darwin's books and Hitler was adamantly a creationist. He explains mm-hmm. so explicitly in Mein Kampf. And and Darwin argued in in Descent of Man, he explained that that all of these Christian anthropologists, Louis Agassiz and others, were all talking about the different races of men that they said that God created separately and put on separate continents with the intention that they remain separate. And Darwin was the first person to point out there is only one race of humans. Yeah. We're yeah. all the same race. There's no, there's not there's no distinction. There's no no. If everybody wants to argue that there are different races, they can't even identify how many different races there are because there is only one, and people are only using superficial differences to to divide us, and yeah. that's the truth. All of these racist ideas all come from the creationists. Every one of them, the Ku Klux Klan, are entirely creationist. They explicitly mm-hmm. say so. They are Bible believers who do not accept evolution, and they say so. They do. They do. But remember, as you have encountered so many times with creationists, the only thing they ever read of Darwin's works 
are the title page of Origin of Species. Yeah. And the yeah. subtitle is or the preservation of the favored races. And of course, By which he that, means races of broccoli. Yeah, I know. And cabbage. cabbage <laughs> and I believe squirrels. Yeah, but yeah, he just literally discusses the races of cabbage. He's using it as, as species, as it was used at the time by biologists. Yeah. Fine. But of course, they don't know that. They don't know that words have ever had another use, or they don't want to pretend that that's even possible because shut up, my Bible is perfect. And then of course, Obviously, that means he's a racist because the word race is in the subtext of the title and uh, or the and that they're never going to open any of the pages in between and read it. Yeah. Are you kidding? Because words never change in mean and not anything. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's another mean. thing about that. that that's, a, that's a good point, JR. I mean, in Darwin's day, the word race did not mean what it does today. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he, he was talking about a lineage that could be compared to or was perhaps transient between the the species and subspecies classifications but yeah. but it's but it's it's only an ancestral lineage it could be any ancestral lineage otherwise and the the way that he was describing it when you, when you read descent of man darwin starts out talking with the language that was ubiquitous throughout anthropology of his day Every anthropologist around the world was exceedingly racist. Yeah. Uh, um, for example, uh, Carolus Linnaeus, the guy who invented taxonomy uh -huh. himself, said that there were four species of humans. And then, yeah. well, then there were two other species of humans. There's four, four species of Homo sapiens and two other species that he included, you know, chimpanzees and orangutans. He, he, he classified those as human. But he divided Asian people were their own group, and and uh, the, he, he divided into white Europeans, black Africans, yellow Asians, and red Americans. He divided as if, them as by, if they were all by personality. Separately. He also divided yeah. them by personality as well. Yeah. So when Darwin started his book, Descent of Man, he was talking in the language that was ubiquitous throughout anthropology. Uh -huh. And they always categorized everything in terms of higher and lower life forms. And they did yeah. the same thing with humanity. They put it, you know, the higher people and lower people. But as you read through Descent of Man, there's a, there's a progression. There's an evolution in the book itself where Darwin begins to challenge all of these ideas until he finally gets to the point where you say, you know what, it, there is no higher or lower. We are all equal. We yeah. are e all, we are all equally equally evolved. The people that have we, it's not that white people came from you know, came from the black Africans that are there today. The black Africans that are there today themselves descended from the same people we did, and they have continued to evolve just as we did. So that's that's what his argument was. But there is one line relatively yeah. early on in the book where he mentions the higher or lower races as they were known in his day. And that is the only line that the creationists can take out of context. Of course. Somebody else uh, pointed this out in the comments. They also read the first bit about the eye and then they stop for the next paragraph. Because, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, because it's they so, quote so amazing. Them. Yeah. Yeah. He actually starts to say, Yes, it might seem like it's far fetched to say that the eye formed in this way, and then goes, but, and gives the explanation, <laughs> but they missed that bit off. But reason tells me, oh, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> well, no, a reason is the devil's harlot who can do nothing but slander and harm whatever God says and does. So that was Luther, right? Yeah, Martin Luther was explicit about reason being the, the worst enemy that faith has. All right, so I'm going to try to read this on. Which is kind of funny because he had uh, a lot of very good criticisms of the Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah. He did. And it's it funny did. how many Catholics were inspired by him. In fact, the Nazis uh, said that the Crystal Knot, the day that they went and destroyed all of the, uh, the Jewish businesses and everything, like all at one night, they said that was inspired by Martin Luther and his publication of the book called The Jews and Their Lies. Yeah, where he said that the wrote. way to he he said that the way to baptize a Jew was by tying a rock around his neck and throwing him off a bridge. So yeah, but 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 they're going to blame the Darwinists for all uh -huh. of that. 
That has uh, so many echoes of the Crusades. That, that's, that's, that's absolutely horrible. Yeah. 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 Okay, so continuing on, I'm going to have to read the beginning of this line again. Uh, Cain made love to his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Um, And Cain was then building a city. Cool, there's an industrious dude. He shows up alone, him and his wife, he builds a town. That's that's a badass guy. He knows how to work. Uh, (laughs) So he he built a city all by himself for he and his wife. Yeah, he named it after. He can't uh, tell the land anymore. He can't make anything grow, so he has to build the city. Okay, so yep, yeah, that, that so he turns into one. He turns into what? What would you call that? Uh, uh, it, an an artisan, arch- he, he went from, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So stone he cutter? named it after his, huh? Oh, sorry, just thought stone cutter, but yeah. no, please continue. Stone cutter probably works too. A mason. There we go. Ah. <laughs> oh, we can't say mason because that just opens up a whole other bucket of of controversies, doesn't it? <sighs> a, so yeah, Cain was building a city, and he named it after his son Enoch. And to Enoch was born Irad, and Irad was the father of Mehujael. Uh, and uh, somebody else going to have to pronounce that because I have no idea. Mehujael. Mehujael. <laughs> uh was the father, <laughs> and Mehujael was the father of Methushael, and Methushael was the father of Lamech. And Lamech married two women, two women. Okay, but so the marriage, so the Bible defines marriage as one guy in a threesome with two babes. Yes, yeah, see, it's one totally name, fine. Although, yeah, one name, I guess, I guess the apologetic here would be that since this is the line of Cain, it's not okay. Oh yeah, but I was going to say Peter's the only one in a biblical marriage. <laughs> but then you've got loads of righteous people who go on and have um, countless wives and concubines. Well, then again, let's let's go back over to Adam now because you know his marriage is his one man and his sister, or rather his clone, and all his daughters. Oh, oh I did not need to think of that. <laughs> no. It's it goes on. Honestly, and, and, and just talk. just out of curiosity, since Eve was made from Adam's rib, she is effectively him. She is his genetics. She's an ex- she's part of his body. So when he makes love to her, is he not masturbating? And that's totally that fine. Spin. And God said, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> 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 this book is seeming more and more divine every minute, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he married two women, one named Ada and the other Zila. Ada Zila. Okay. Ada gave uh, uh, Ada gave birth to Jabal, and he was the father of those who live in tents and raise livestock. So the father of those who live in tents came from Cain. Yeah. So we still have people who live in tents. Well, no, here, here, here's the thing. Um, so the translation that's used here is he was the first of tent dwellers with livestock. Uh, so yeah, the Hebrew says literally father of in keeping with the uh, predisposition of the language and culture to imagine historical uh I that that's a word I can't pronounce, Mr. Alter. Uh, concatenation genealogically. Uh, so uh, I I don't know why. I, I guess he just would have wouldn't have been living in a tent, or maybe so the people that's par- supposed to be necessarily part of a city or something. So the, the the cultures that subsequently live in tents are not from Cain. I mean, it Moving seems, on. Yeah. Moving on. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all. The word all. Let's pay attention to the word all here. He was the father of all who plays stringed instruments and pipes. Hmm. Does anyone else think this sounds like the uh, giving your own backstory to an adopted pantheon of gods? Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, I I always thought that that. I, I never would have thought that Eddie Van Halen was descended from Cain, while the rest of, uh, say, his brother was not descended from Cain. I'm a little confused about that. 
Well, one thing I was going to actually mention about this is um, when you actually start dividing things up to, into sources, and uh, I know there's been mentioned that the documentary hypothesis doesn't have the same support as it did, but if you think of this as the Yahwist text, the next mm -hmm. one where it faces it from Adam via Seth to Noah, that's the priestly text. Originally, it could have ended up where Lamech ends up being the father of Noah. You end with a Lamech on Seth's line as well. So there would be two different genealogies, each tracing from Adam to Noah via Lamech. Um, so the way that I've always read it is that they are saying these are the first people who did this. They spawned civilizations who did these things. Yeah, yeah, I would think that would be accurate. Uh, and so now Zilla also had a son, Tubal Cain. Yeah. Tubal Cain, uh -huh. because he was a tubular pregnancy, I don't know, Tubal Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron, and Tubal Cain's sister was Nama. Okay, so now it seems to be that everybody who lives in tents uh, is descended from Cain, and it seems to be that the pe at least the people who invented stringed instruments and pipes are also descended from Cain. No blacksmiths. There is a, um, it's also interesting to mention, um, the Book of Enoch um, actually has a story about the Nephilim, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit when, like before the Noah story. But one of the ideas they had was that when the angels actually came down to, to like marry the women, they actually taught them all of this arcane knowledge, which was like how to craft different things and stuff like that. So they've got that idea in the book. Of Interesting. Enoch. Yeah, and the God's punishment to those angels was he basically locked them up into like the, the ends of the universe, essentially. Yeah. He mm -hmm. took them and he just chained them up there uh, because they are the, the watchers. Um, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, that first part of first Enoch is, uh, is very interesting. We do interesting how, interesting how, uh, I'm sorry. It, it's, it's interesting how, uh, we're supposed to be the ones with free will, even though technically we can't have free will the way Christian theology is laid out and mm -hmm. angels don't have free will, but, but these angels are awfully disobedient for beings that don't have free will. Yeah. It's like the book of Enoch has them. They've been appointed to watch over God's perfect creation and everything. And it's designed in such a way where everything just takes over. It's like the sun makes its transit across the sky and all the seasons change and things like that. And these angels are appointed to watch it. And they've basically got fuck all to do. So they end up seeing these nice looking women and say, all right, let's go fuck them. Just for something to do. Yeah, but, but you know, I saw the movie Dogma, and they were supposed to lack the equipment, but I guess, I guess that uh, was a cinematic liberty. Well, the, the they definitely weren't going for the biblically accurate angels; they were going for the androgynous angels, uh, not the "I have so many eyes." The sort of Cthulhu esque <laughs> level, of yeah. the Lovecraftian <laughs> horrors of covered in eyes and wheels and ugh. yeah, they're they're pretty nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Biblical angels. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a couple. Of, you kill. Yeah, I'm gonna read a couple of the, the the side chats that were brought up for us. So, uh, PhD Tony uh, says that whole Mark of Cain issue seems seems like a reference to the concept of outlawry, and uh, I'm I'm not sure how that would be interpreted either because I, I'm I was thinking that it has to be a physical mark of some way. Uh, I I don't know what that could be. And uh, let's see the next one. And it, it's okay. Nobody knows. Yeah. yeah. They're good. So Mojo Magic. I knew I probably messed that up. Uh, how much money do you want to have? How much money do you want to have a conversation with Steve McRae over the definition of atheism? Uh, yeah. yeah. Since, since he has made that his entire identity, uh, not just his declaration, but arguing that at every moment, that when you tell him a thousand times that we've we've gone over this and over this and over this, and you're never going to accept correction, and I I've got the goods, then we should stop talking about this, and you should go find another hobby. And he doesn't listen to it, so that's all he's got. That's all he's ever going to have. Don't bring it up in my chat again. I won't read it. See, uh, I mean, I think 
okay, so I, when it when it comes to I've, I've had uh, talks with uh, Steve about this, he acknowledges the the more uh, colloquial usage of atheism, uh, where it essentially just means non-theist, uh, and but when he in every instance when it comes to the realm of philosophy, uh, he is kind of right and when we say something like agnostic you can't say every instance because i know of at least three objections right now right off the top of my head it, well uh, did uh, did you uh read anything by uh graham oppie i know that he makes those arguments as well no i'm just talking about anthony flew and the other two names i don't have uh, i can't remember off the, off the top of my head but yeah there, there are other people and then they precede this too i wrote a very long article which unfortunately is down at the moment because Patheos, the blog post that I used to post to, has been taken over by Mormons. Uh, so was need, it really? Yes. So, and, and so they disabled all of my posts. I had no idea that it was taken over by Mormons. Yeah. So And they disabled all of my posts for being atheists. So now I have to... I mean, I got the file. I can upload to somewhere else. But I just need to find someplace else to upload all of these things to. But the thing is, is that the, the definition, not every time in philosophy, there's a limited number of times in philosophy, it became popular after, uh, it became popular in the, the 20th century. And prior to that, I mean, um, it was also used as a, like uh, Christians were at one point called atheists. Uh, so you know, that, but that's a different kind of a, a different context entirely. When we're talking about the redefinition of agnosticism, I mean, that, that came from, from Thomas Huxley's own misunderstanding of the word Gnosticism uh, and using an, an etymological, an etymologically senseless application because he didn't like some of the atheists that he knew in his day. And so his misunderstanding now is carried on, is, is carried on by some, not all philosophers. And then prior to that, the definition that was in use then and is commonly in use now is still the same. It never changed. The colloquial use that every atheist organization uses is the one that you can find in Webster's Dictionary prior to uh, Thomas Huxley making up his word for uh, agnostic. And when you go back into the 1700s, the very first people to self-identify as atheists defined atheism as a, as a non-belief in God. And then they both kept, both of them came up with different definitions for people who also had a belief that God does not exist. So there's the established priority. There is the consistency through today. There's everything. There's everything we need to not have that argument anymore. It's just that some people cannot not have that argument anymore. No, listen. I, I, I I'm with you on. You know, he 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 does talk about it too much. I, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I've I told him how to talk about something else. I, I've told him that my, myself. <laughs> and but and, uh, it, 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 we're done. I I eventually yeah. had to block him because he couldn't drop it. Yeah, and, and, and so it comes up every 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 day of his life. That's going to come up, but it's not going to come up every day of mine. And and he gets it wrong okay, so even then, when it comes to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. And so if people want to watch that, the, um, there's a channel, Nate Brody. He did a full breakdown on Steve's argument and showed him in several videos how wrong he actually is. So I, I think that that topic is, is done. Yeah, I, and I'm certainly done with it. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on to the next quote is uh, they also read, this is from Etefti. I don't know how to say that. Uh, they also read the first bit about the eye. They stop before the next paragraph. Yes, we meant we mentioned that before. I'm sorry yeah. it took, took so long to get to that. All right, so getting back to Genesis 4. Uh, let's see, we, we had the, the Lemek and the Tubalcane and all that. And, and so you know, uh, Lilith mentioned that there was also the people who were the blacksmiths. And well, here we have uh, Zilla's son, Tubalcane, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Uh -huh. And then it mentions that Tubal Cain's sister was Nama. And that's interesting because why even bring her up? To, oh, and nobody, nobody else's girl ever gets a name. And sister, not necessarily wife. This is why I mentioned before this smacks very much of inventing your own backstories for an adopted pantheon. 
Like it's a like a reference to something that everyone would know about at the time, but we have no idea who Nama is or what association she would have with metallurgy, if any, or what any of that means. Um, but it, I mean, clearly it's referencing something. You also, yeah, well, this, sorry, I was going to say, you, you also have to understand that these were all those folk tale, tales before they were ever written down. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of the stuff where there could have been stories about um, Lamech and his family, like his sons and daughters, and they have ended up being lost to us. So it was important enough to mention, yes, she was a figure who was mentioned in these earlier tales, but you don't actually have any of them to actually look at to find out what her relevance was. But we know okay. that the omniscient, infallible deity who, who, who commands everything to be literally precise mm -hmm. decided that the, the important information is not that we know how the, the, the galaxy really works, is not to yeah. know that the sun is just one of millions of stars, is not to know that the reason we should wash our hands is because microbes and such, but we do need to know that Tubal Cain's sister was named Nama. Yeah. <laughs> And actually, that's gonna matter. We mentioned uh, you mentioned JB the uh, the documentary hypothesis, and I have, of course, highlighted my Bible, uh, <laughs> at least the Pentateuch by authorship. And indeed, this yellow is the Yahwist, and all of this is the Yahwist source until we get to the part we're coming up with here. At the very end, there's an insertion in a redactor, possibly also from the priestly source. But it makes sense that if this was indeed the Yahwist writings from the southern kingdom of Judah and then was compiled into the Pentateuch after the exile, um, some of the library that they were referencing may very well have been lost in the destruction of Jerusalem and the burning of the temple, yada, yada, yada. Um, it, you know, it makes perfect sense that that would happen and that there might have been a writing referring to her that just you know, it was lost and was not available when they compiled what they have here. Um, but the part that's an insertion that is not part of the Yahweh's text is the bit about Seth. Yeah. The original text of the Yahweh's has no reference to Seth whatsoever. And it's supposedly to, because you jump from having, oh, look, we've just traced this lineage, and then suddenly we're over to Seth. So mm -hmm. the idea is that the redactor said, right, well, we need to make these mesh up. So if I yeah. add the reference and say she gave birth a third time and Seth's the third one, those two things are now reconciled. Well, he's, a, he's a replacement for Abel, and they steal half of his lineage, uh, the lineage through Cain, Enoch, and Methuselah, and Lamech. They're all sort of stolen and... No, it's just a different guy with the same name and the same lineage. Eh. To continue on. Sorry. Yeah, Lamech <laughs> said to his wives, Ada and Zilla, listen to me, wives of Lamech, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech 77 times. Somebody yeah. want to explain what that means? Uh, so it's, uh, it's interesting that, uh, that this is, uh, Lamech saying this. Uh, so I can, I can read out the note that's in Alter. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the narrative context of this poem is long lost, but it looks like a warrior's triumphal song cast as a boast to his wives. Uh, unlike the looser form of the earlier uh, poetic in insets. Uh, this poem follows the parallelistic pattern of biblical verse. Uh, every term in each initial verse set has its somatic counterpart in the second verse. In the Hebrew, the first pair of verse sets has, uh, I mean, it goes into like the, the poetic parallelism between each yeah. verse. Um, and uh, then he goes on uh, to say that in the same way there is a pronounced tendency in the poetry to intensify semantic material uh, as it is repeated in approximate uh, synonymity. Perhaps then what Lamech is saying, quite barbarically, is that not only has he killed a man for wounding him, he has not hesitated to kill a mere boy for hurting him. Uh, so I guess for uh, uh, 
he is just like a- admitting or boasting to the killing of somebody that uh, we just don't uh, hear about. <laughs> I would love to hear more about that. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm a little confused too because it was the reference that we mentioned a moment ago to some people's interpretation, though this was, I don't think, ever implied uh, in, in Genesis 3 that, that Eve ever had a sexual liaison with the serpent. But mm-hmm. if we're going to listen to anything having to do with the children of Ada and Zilla, well, what about God and Zilla? Isn't that where the serpent came from? Godzilla. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you know, it, 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 maybe that's that's what the dinosaur bones are. They're to test our faith and also because, you know, Zilla. I know it was a long walk for a dumbass joke. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we don't have any idea why somebody's being avenged 77 times or why, so why he killed somebody. Well, well, the thing is, okay, so Cain had to be avenged sevenfold, right? And this mm-hmm. guy, 77 times. Uh, so it, I guess it uh, may just be a reestablishment of this, uh, I don't know if you want to, I wouldn't call it a covenant, uh, but of this punishment, I suppose. Uh, it's, uh, it is a, like, you know, years on, it seems to be a reestablishment of it. Yeah, it, it seems to be, it's, they're establishing that killing is like one of the worst sins you can commit. The funny thing is, though, that um, this has taken place on Cain's lineage. And as I've said before, if that led to Noah, it would make sense. Then everybody's actually now a descendant. You'd still have this multiplying effect with, with each generation. But if the lineage ends at Lamech, which is how it's written now, it doesn't make much sense. You have the end of that established seven, seven, seven mm-hmm. multiplication. So then the next line, a character we just brought up a moment ago, uh, Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth. Yeah. Saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel since Cain killed him. But Seth also had a son. And he named him Enoch. No, Enosh. Yeah. So, in place of her other son, who was killed by her estranged son, so now she's, a, according to this, she's got one kid, it would seem. Yeah. And then that child just like, I don't know, did the, uh, the, the, the fission thing and then split into two mm. different kids. And <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how fine. they reproduced back then. <laughs> But the, the only other option is that uh, Seth um, is either having an Oedipal complex mm. or he's uh, he's getting very fraternal. I, I don't know. There's no nicer way I can put that. It, well, you know, I many other sons and daughters. And, and remember, unless they're associated with something evil, uh, women usually aren't worth mentioning. So we'll just assume she had a bunch of daughters in there. And um, yeah, dirt and Because otherwise it would imply that the Mormons were right, that the Garden of Eden was in uh, Jackson County, Missouri. <laughs> and, and apparently Cain had to move to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping the traditions alive. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, so then uh, the last, and it says, at that time, people began to call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. This is an establishment of, or I I guess a, 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 uh, what's it called? A retcon uh, Mm -hmm. of of monotheism. Uh, So, of course, in reality, uh the earliest uh ancient israelites would have been polytheistic and then uh by the time of josiah you get to henotheism where there are many gods but only one should be worshipped uh that being yahweh and later of course not that much later uh probably after the babylonian exile you finally get uh or i guess it's totally possible that uh josiah could have instituted an actual monotheism, uh, but that that remains unclear. Um, yeah. So uh, for but then you get monotheism uh, afterwards. Uh, 
so if, if you're trying to establish this ancient root of monotheism, uh, then I guess this would be a way to do it. This is when the Lord's name is invoked. This is when the, the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's when that's used. Yeah, and another thing with that is that um, the reason that the source that this comes from is called the Yahweh source is because God is named that early on, whereas the other ones, they use terms like El Shaddai, and it's only when yeah. it's revealed to Moses at the burning bush that you actually get the proper name of God, his proper four-letter tetragrammaton name. In, in the Bible, there are so many names of gods that are used, far yeah. more than mm -hmm. just simple epithets. Uh, uh, there are just different names used for them. Uh, so I think the, the, the way it was initially laid out by Wellhausen uh, in the documentary hypothesis is I think it's outdated, I think it's inaccurate. Uh, but it, what it does give us is a good framework for how we should view these texts as yeah. uh, more like compilations. Uh, uh, yeah. So there, there are a lot of, like, you can't do it simply by, uh, by the name of God anymore. Yeah, um, there's lots of, lots of different criteria. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there is, uh, it, it is, it is interesting. Uh, because pretty much every scholar disagrees in in some of these situations. They, yeah. no, no two scholars agree completely on the actual history of the text. Uh, we can mostly, for the most part, either something is just ambiguous, uh, or we can say that something is earlier than something else. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there's yeah. not that much we can uh, we can say about uh, authorship, especially here. I think yeah, I uh, since we're at the end of of uh, of this chapter, it's interesting to point out that notice how it starts kind of out as a story, a kind of a mythological story, and now we're having genealogies. So these myths are being converted to some sort of uh, actual people, but there yeah. still has the myth element in there of oh, this is the guy that invented the pipes and stuff, and that's where pipes came from, my ki my children, you know? Uh -huh. And um, so, it, and also, because we're, we're about to pass the origins of the universe, uh, to mention uh, John chapter 1, because John chapter 1, in the beginning, there, uh, there, there was the Word, and the Word was God. So, like, like John chapter 1 kind of expands on it for Christians, that that Jesus was also there with with God at the beginning of the universe. Yeah, and that's a major retcon. My dad, my dad made us memorize those verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Through Him, all things were made, and without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Um, that making Jesus the Logos and the son of God and all the rest of it makes him mystically present in the creation and also gives you a nice little excuse to get out of the obvious polytheism of let us make man in our image. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely another retcon, uh, which we see, obviously we're seeing it in the text here. We see it in Christianity, um, but that is how it is read by, by fundamentalist believers. Definitely. I want to make one more comment on that. I, I read uh, Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi, and I found it a, an, an interesting foray into the type of mind control that Charles Manson was using on the Manson family. Mm. And he was, of course, a religious zealot, and he cited uh, Nazis a couple of times in some of his mind control techniques. And one of the things that he paraphrased from them, and I prefer Manson's version of it because he goes into a little bit more detail, when you talk about, it says, uh, if if you tell a lie enough times, you know, the people will believe it. And then Manson elaborates, and he said that they may not believe it completely, but if it's all they've ever heard, then they have nothing else to draw upon. Yeah. And I found that to be very important because 
this these passages that we just read this is the story of how the tiger got a stripes oh excuse me about how people started doing masonry and blacksmithing yeah. and, and living in tents and that, and that sort of thing we get all this story this is the only story we've got about that and yeah. we don't know anything about other cultures we don't know we haven't studied a word of anthropology or archaeology of any area at any time so this is the only story we have and so that's all we've got but if you do look at anthropology if you study the archaeology of or if you, even if you just talk to an archaeologist from any area of the world about the area that they study you're going to find a, a contradictory story mm -hmm. but people don't have that the reason that the bible has become so prevalent is because it is the lie that was told uh, over and over and over again and it's the only story these people know and on uh, to expand on that a little bit, I don't know if I'm understanding C.S. Lewis when he talked about how he thinks that Genesis is, and uh, Jesus they work together in that in that uh, it's myth made real. So he dismissed mm. all of the all of uh, the old old uh, mythological stories as just the culture and stories and folk tales of the Hebrews, and Jesus is real. And Jesus used those myths to manifest himself. Well, I think he definitely would have used those uh, myths to uh, to build a basis for mm -hmm. for himself as a son of God. Because uh, I mean, he does that throughout every gospel. Uh, <laughs> he he cites them, and when he argues with the Pharisees, he cites them. Uh, yeah. He he definitely would have done something like that. Like he wasn't, uh, I mean, he was a rabbi, right? So he would have known these texts pretty well, uh, just like his opponents, but his interpretation was far different than, uh, than theirs. Uh, and also I did want to point out on the, on, on the, you know, that first part of John, right? The first, what, three or four verses there. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if we do take it in an English translation, uh, it's obviously a contradiction uh the he was uh the word was with god and the word was god uh yeah contradiction there already but uh i do want to point out that in the greek it is a little different because when they say uh when they're talking about uh god himself they use the article they use hotheos uh but then when they're mm -hmm. saying that uh the word was god they don't use the article they just say theos uh, so he was, uh, it could be translated as a God, but, uh, mm -hmm. Tertullian, uh, early church father, he actually, uh, he saw that discrepancy and he argued that Theos, uh, could just mean something divine, uh, mm -hmm. which I, I think that that tracks with the way Greek is often used. I, I think that tracks, honestly. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Like it is more poetic to say like he, uh, was God there. It's way mm -hmm. more poetic. Uh, but I, I don't think it fully represents the, the translation, the actual Greek. The, but it could also mean that he's simply something <clears throat> divine. Yeah, yeah, he's simply a, a divine thing, yeah. The rest well, and even monotheism is full of divine creatures, your angels and your devils and your servants of God that are, you know, quasi-divine. Even, even monotheism isn't really, you know. Yeah. Lalandra? The rest, of, the rest of the chapter kind of sets it up that Jesus... Jesus is the word made flesh, you know? The logo. Yeah. When I stood, I took a class on, uh, on uh, comparative world religions or the history of comparative world religions. And, and this was, uh, it was a, a PhD uh, professor, a Methodist who, who was giving this course. And he was talking about how the first three gospels cast Jesus as a king or as the new David or as the new Moses and then John comes along and tries to recast the Jesus character as God. Mm -hmm. So now Jesus yeah. is the new version of God. Yeah, so that, that's, that's why you have uh, the those first three as the synoptics, and then John is his own thing. Uh, yeah. Because it's so much more exalted. All right, I've Another got... Expression. I'm going to read... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that you, you see a progression... So the even like in the synoptics, there's actually a progression as Jesus becomes more than Mark actually stated him as. He becomes more powerful, more of a figure, and John, it's like he's Uber Christ. 
<laughs> you got a All right, so I've got some super <laughs> chats to read. Oh, if uh, I could read a, a little bit of, of that chapter, um, just a second, and then we'll read super chats. Um, okay. Okay. So now we already went through the part, he leaves the word, and the word was God, and all things were made through him, you know, without nothing was that, was that was, without him, nothing was made. In him was life, and life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, is dark, and the darkness didn't comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, his name was John, this man came from, to be a witness, of course. He might not, uh, he was not that light, but was sent to bear the witness of the light, and that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming to the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, his own did not receive him, but as, as many as received to him, that he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So, mm -hmm. like, the word becomes flesh, you know. It, it, I don't know. It's like Lilith saying, it's a retcon where they're uh, giving Jesus a, a bigger role in the creation of light and all, and all this good. Yeah, we're going to get over the all of this over and over again, but I, I see... The, the deification of Jesus in this way where you have to make him where you have to make him into God somehow I see that as trying to reconcile a contradiction where Jesus is otherwise violating the very first commandment that is so celebrated from Exodus 20 because God you know the very first commandment is that thou shalt have no other gods before me and then Jesus comes along and describes himself as a god and says that he is the conduit to get to get to jehovah so he is a god before god so uh for for that that's why there's some that's part of the reason why there are so many differing christologies uh mm -hmm. so one of the reasons i like in terms of, of theology my favorite field is christology because it's just so interesting so you can have like the, the word was made flesh, but how was it made flesh? Was uh, was it inserted into the mind of an existing person, Jesus? Were they cohabitating or was this flesh made specifically for uh, for the logos? Or yeah. maybe like there's like a whole slew of different ideas of different ways that they have uh, tried to understand uh, just that one verse. Different uh, movements from them as well. There were different movements which actually favored certain ideas. And there's the adoptionist uh, position was this idea that there was just this bloke and then he got possessed by this thing called the Christ. And that's how he was both man and divine. And there's all kinds of different variations on that from different movements. Yeah, we're, 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 all I can say right now is that we're going to get there. There yeah, is so much. There. There's so much. <laughs> we're a little ahead of it, but there's a lot there. <laughs> We've got a habit of jumping ahead. Yeah, so, now, so, from Genesis to John. Uh, yeah, is, there, there's a yeah. there's a whole bit in the middle there. <laughs> it is jumping, but it is still talking about the creation of the universe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, on right. Gen yeah. and Genesis is, as well. So now the the question is: Do we today, in the forty five minutes or so that we have left, do we want to move on to Genesis five? I mean, I think we should read some of the super chats, but Genesis 5 is oh, yes, I forgot. We do short. Need to, we do have, we, we, it is short, and it's awfully boring. Yeah, I yeah, would say boring. that we should get through it now because it's a genius. Let's just power. Okay, yeah. there we go. This is the written account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. So they all look like apes. Uh, he oh. created them male and female and blessed them. And he made them mankind when they were created uh and so it, it it's a little confusing there because that one matches the the creation in genesis 2 yeah. but not in genesis 1 and then moving on when adam had lived 130 years he had a son in his own likeness in his own image and he named him seth after seth was born adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters Altogether, Adam lived a total of 930 years, and then he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Enosh. After he became the father of Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Seth lived a total of 912 years, and then he died. 
And when Enosh had lived 90 years, he became the father of Kenan. After he became the father of Kenan, Enosh lived 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enosh lived a total of 905 years, and then he died. Do we really need to say that then then he died after the number of years? <laughs> Actually, yes, because there's a character coming up who breaks the pattern. Okay, okay, that's why we have to be so redundant. It's just like, I don't know, it. it I, what, what other formula do we see this kind of redundancy in? All right, so uh, when Mehalet, well, Mehalel, Mehalel had lived 65 years. He became 65 years. So he was, if we do the math correctly, he was what, four? Um, he <laughs> became the father of Jared. After he became the father of Jared, Mahalel lived 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Mahalel lived a total of 895 years and then he died. And then Jared uh, lived 162 years, had a sandwich, and got arrested for, pit, for pedophilia. <laughs> He became the father of Enoch. After he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived another 800 years and had other sons and daughters altogether. Jared lived a total of 962 years, and then he died. And when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God of 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a, a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, and then he was no more because God took him away. Yep. And I'm going to interpret that as a tornado came down and sucked up Enoch. <laughs> close, close. You're, you're not far off there. Uh, so he, he was uh, probably, he, he ascended, right? Like we have some of these accounts in the Bible, yeah. Elijah famously. Yeah. Um, so uh, the... So this is like such a such an interesting and cryptic verse initially here. Uh, yeah. So uh, at this point, they probably would have already had uh, Enoch traditions, not necessarily the books of Enoch. Uh, those did come later, uh, but uh, some Enoch tradition was already known at this point. Yeah. Uh, so when when it comes, I mean, I, I do recommend at least reading First Enoch. Uh, it, it's actually a good read until you get this mm -hmm. to the similitudes. Then it's kind of boring um yeah so uh there the um yeah this this one thing so, so much has spawned from this uh the entire nokian corpus uh and the uh i mean we see this in like modern uh in modern literature in modern uh media uh we see these interpretations of Enoch and uh, people think it's like, you know, these super mystic, these super mystical texts. They're, they're not really that act. They're not that hard to understand actually, if you read them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he has this association with angels because in the Enochian books, he does transform into an angel. Uh, oh. So, but that's, that's even later on. Uh, he essentially becomes a uh, Metatron uh yeah that that that's essentially what what happens with enoch uh not to be confused with a transformer megatron yeah exactly <laughs> not, to be, not to be confused very important uh <laughs> distinction he did not have wheels <laughs> he was yeah, the first elijah Ranger. elijah's the one who got his who got wheels <laughs> you're right so okay, so we have uh, who was no more because God took him away. Uh, when Methuselah had lived 187 years, he became the father of Lamech again. So Lamech's got two deaths. There's a number of pe pe these people are coming up again. And after he became the father of Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Methuselah lived a total of 969 years, and then he died. And he's the record holder, holder for the longest life mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Un un unless we're talking about a lunar calendar, mm. in which case Methuselah lived 80 years. But then you start to see some of the problems when you actually do try to divide it. As you said, one of the blokes would have been four years old. Five. When he had babies. Yeah. Because yeah. there yeah. were two in here that are 65 years old when they have their first kid. Yeah. But um, there was a tradition like that. There was um, 
I'm, I can't think of which king's list it was, but there's a famous king's list. Sumerian where, king list. Yeah, yep. that's what. And the more, the better the king was, the more worthy he was, the longer the vein they gave him. So it was basically to say, like, this person lived a long time because they were worthy sort of thing. And I think it's the same sort of tradition here. What I noticed with the Sumerian king list is that the antediluvian kings, the eight kings that are listed before the flood swept over, and yes, they're talking about the same flood, it seems, yeah, uh, because it was the same area, and it dates to the same time. Yeah. So they, they have, uh, what, what I'm saying is that there was the, 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 the flood of Shurapak uh, that, that took out another town as well, and, and uh, that's the one that before we get the story of, of uh, Ziasudra, it's the one on which the Gilgamesh account is based, it's the one that apparently that the Noah account is in, eventually based, is yeah. on this Naza's real localized flood of a local king who's already got his livestock in a barge trying to take them to market and gets washed out into the Red Sea mm-hmm. by, by whatever flood event it was. And the way that it's described in these earlier works is not like rain, it's described more as a tsunami. So these mm-hmm. exper- these people experienced a tsunami that washed his barge out, and his barge was, was propelled by punting sticks, so that's not going to do very well in the Red <laughs> Sea. So, yeah, yeah so... <laughs> Okay, so you're I'm, just trying to stay upright. You're just trying to just don't die. Just stay upright. That's yeah. That's all. Yeah, exactly. So, doing. so the interesting thing about that, we have these eight kings, and the eight kings that are listed before then, apparently ruled for close to a quarter million years. If you tally oh. up all of their ages, because mm-hmm. they they ruled for tens of thousands of years, each. Mm-hmm. And so, but when you get after that, suddenly their their ages are dramatically reduced. Still ridiculously long by our standards, but yeah. still, but dramatically reduced. And then they've become more sensible in the the third section of the Sumerian king list, where there's something happening with the ages. There's obviously being miswritten or misinterpreted the same way. And with the with the antediluvian kings, every one of them ends in a double zero. Yeah. Now, if they all end in double zero, then I'm thinking there, there, there's got to be the same problem with reading all of their ages. And yeah. all but all but one of them, or maybe all but two, are divisible by cleanly divisible by twelve at mm-hmm. the same time. So I mean, there is an exception in there, but but otherwise, it's all of them are divisible by one hundred. All of them are divisible by twelve. I think I can see where the uh, where the discrepancy is. Yeah. And the Bible ends up giving an explanation explanation for that by saying God specifically shortened man's lifetime lifespan after uh, the flood. Did he shorten it, or did he just? just yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I guess it would have to put up put in the discrepancy because this was before. By some interpretations, this was before the, the number zero had been invented. Now I know that there, there's a there's a mark for zero. There's not a number for zero, but there's a mark for zero in the sexagesimal system that the that the Mesopotamians were using. And uh, Lawrence and I had had talked about this a number of times because I always I I got the impression that this sexagesimal system that they were using at that time was based on sixty. And if you put one, if you have the number sixty, and you put particular mark on it, then that reduces to six. But if you put a different mark on it, then it increases to 600. Uh-huh. And then I'm thinking 666, that's where the number of the beast came from. But but uh, Lawrence says, no, no that's, heavily that's something that. else. <laughs> yeah. I acknowledge the, the, the expert says that's something else. I don't know why, but <laughs> oh, I, okay. I actually I have a I have a video. It's uh, it's my video on Revelation. It's it's, it's under the Forged Fiction series, so Forged Fiction okay. Revelation. Uh, I, I go over in detail how we pretty much know like that it the that six 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 well, I can't talk six 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 is uh, is Nero, uh, and the way they got it was from the gematria of his name. Uh, so in in Greek, it's uh, it would be uh, Neron, uh, and that would be uh, 666 if you do the gematria, where every letter has a uh, a numerical value associated with it. Uh, but the Latin transliteration of the name is Nero, so it drops off that final uh, N, 
uh, which is why in the Latin versions, we get the number 616. Uh, everyone was aware that it meant Nero based on Gematria. Well, I like I, I accept that, but I, I still think that mine is a more interesting story because it implies that the that the that the the number six 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 came from merchants, and that this, this is somehow a demonization of commercial industries. <laughs> Capitalism is evil. Capitalism yeah. is the mark of the beast. Um, this is kind of a tangent on that, but when we talk about numbers, it reminds me of stories, like uh, uh, they're divisible by twelve. At number seven, uh, mm -hmm. number three. I mean, in literature, there's the rule of three. Like you have three wishes, you had to complete three tasks, etc. So uh, this is why the first uh, five chapters of Genesis remind me of stories. But it seems as though with the gene genealogies, there they may be like some forgotten story of some person that existed, uh, some person's story, like a. Uh, robin hood or something you know and uh oh, it's like it, it seems like a mishmash and, and 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 then there's the mythological element of explaining this and that and the origin of of uh you know sacrifice or whatever and but then there's it seems like a, there's a tall tale element to it too because like Definitely. paul paul bunyan they 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 say that we know that methuselah was 969 years old they paul bunyan they said was um i forget the number but over 60 axe handles tall so like mm -hmm. you make these you make these characters larger larger literally than life somebody who lives 969 years somebody who's 60 something axe handles tall and when you talk about paul bunyan was that a giant's axe you know so or mm -hmm. a person's axe that he was 60 axe handles tall you know, yeah, there's a there's something I need to address in the chat. Uh, Chris Decker said rejecting the truth for a more interesting story for shame, Aaron, for shame. I did not <laughs> reject the truth. I, I said to Lawrence, I accept what you're saying. I like my story better because of the implication, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to throw out his explanation for the one I like. Yeah, of course not. You're not a theologian. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i've actually gotten a quote from a theologian that says these what these may be what the facts are but i prefer to believe this <clears throat> and i thought it was the most dishonest thing i'd ever heard up to that moment i think okay so i do have some super chats i have to get to yeah. so uh if the, we're gonna run through these uh the first one is wander ars for 150 dollars. thank you very much for that Be hugely generous uh, for me, the story of the descendants of Cain is the ridiculous way the Bible has of explaining how human beings have music and cattle and tools, just like the Tower of Babel does for language. Yeah, and I can't wait till we get to the Tower of Babel because that's there's a yeah. lot of interesting details about that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Torbjorn Lindberg uh, for I think that's uh, twenty Swedish kroner says uh cain was the first vampire of course uh i've heard that but uh i i've also heard that uh, that akasha or or lilith rather uh is is the first and there's 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 a few uh for the for who the first vampire is it's usually a woman is this in the au where abraham lincoln is a vampire hunter <laughs> I can't be the only one who thinks that this this whole like religion just turns into fandoms and then you have people screaming at each other over Marvel versus DC and then there's a there's an AU spin-off that gets its own fandom going and then you have Mormonism. <laughs> somehow yeah, I, somehow I was I, agree. I was yeah. I was always under the impression that the first vampire were the first vampires were succubi. And that, that it was supposed to be Lilith was the first one. But Absolutely. we've already discussed we've already discussed Lilith and how she's not really I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth <laughs> in regard to all I, I have no comment upon any sorts of activities of such a kind. There's okay, another so... type of story there with Lilith, like folklore. So like they're not the official stories of of the Bible or whatever, but they they're stories that people told their kids. Mm -hmm. You better be careful, Lilith will get you. Yeah, uh, the thing is, those uh, Lilith was awarded away in birthing amulets. 
Yes. Uh, yeah, it was to protect thing. against caught death because she yeah. would take vengeance for her children. Yeah. Okay, so then moving on, the next one was, where, where are we? Oh, Aaron Bredden says uh, $50. Thank you. Uh, love learning all the history in this discussion. I'm enjoying that too. Uh, this is why I'm, I'm really glad that Lawrence accepted my invitation to be on this. I know he's doing his own and I, and I, you know, I haven't seen every episode of his Bible study. Of course we get, he, but... he, the, the only ones that aren't saw were the ones that he was on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even watch that. One. <laughs> But in all fairness, I did see a bit of it. Okay. Um, and then, what is it? Latefti says, there are different versions in the Greek. The older doesn't mention the sun, only the word, while the newer one mentions the sun and the word, a.k.a. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, Lawrence, you want to comment on that? Uh, I mean... I that may be true. I'm not sure. Uh, I all all of the books I have on specifically the Greek text, uh, it, they're all at the studio, uh, so I don't have them on me. But okay. uh, that uh, it didn't come up when we were reading it initially. It may have, but uh, honestly, after a while of reading this, it all just kind of melts together. Uh, so that that may be true. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's something I, I got to warn you about when you get into your scholarship, Lawrence, I go back over some of my old videos and I, I have done, cause I'm doing one that I'm editing now requires that I go back over some things that I talked about years ago. I have really forgotten an awful lot of stuff. I mean, when I, when I go back and I watch the videos that I made, you know, talk about this, I'm like, I completely forget all of that stuff that I was talking about there. And it's amazing how that happens. It's sad that that happens. I wish I could recall all of it. Yeah, it would be nice. Uh, although I am glad that uh, I'm doing the show because uh, the first, uh, up until we get like all the books on the table and up until I actually start taking it super seriously, uh, the earlier episodes of Atheist Sunday School were not good. They were really bad. So hopefully here I can find some redemption in that. Uh, so, and I think I'm doing that. Uh, but I, I, I hope that the viewers would agree that I'm doing that. But well, we always, we should strive to be better than we have been. Is anybody here qualified to absolve them? Like, bless you, my son, you absolve. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next super chat is uh, Benny Olson for 50 Danish kroner. Knowledge hail all. Thank you very much for that. And then moving down to Lena says, what do you think of channels like Digital Gnosis or Majesty of Reason that try to present an equal philosophical basis for theism and non-theism? Is towing the line a good strategy? I'm not aware of either of these channels. So I can't comment. Anybody aware of these channels? Uh, I, I have not heard of those channels, uh, but I think that is at least, um, I think it's a good thing that they're, that they're trying to, uh, I guess I, I, I don't know their content, like I said. Uh, I'm but, familiar with uh, Digital Gnosis. Okay, so what kind of stuff do they, I don't know their positions or? Uh, they present philosophical arguments to suggest that monotheism is uh, reasonable and uh, um, a viable explanation for our origins. Ah, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I guess I would disagree, but I'm glad that they're trying. So, Yeah. Uh, one god is uh, no less ridiculous than 50 or 60 of them, so in, in my, my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, they have, um, they have a slew of different arguments that they use on their channel to explain why um, it would be one god as opposed to many. Uh, and their their primary argument is that the existence of many gods would reduce them all to creatures, oh, no different God. than you or I, just slightly more powerful. Whereas a monotheistic entity, who is just definitionally the uh, most natural default state of existence, and the substrate upon which all else is is predicated, that deity is a creator, not a creature. It, it's a complete brute contingency. It doesn't owe its existence to anything else. It exists just because it does, and everything else exists because of it. 
Yeah, well, that I, I can see. I can see the sense in that, but it doesn't play <clears throat> well with Christianity, does it? No. Well, one yeah, God well, does seem so lonely. It plays just yeah. fine with Gnostic Christianity, but they uh, they got booted out of the club around the uh, Nicene mm. Creed. They did. They did. <clears throat> Rather okay. brutally. Yeah. The the and most. Uh, uh, most modern Orthodox would probably describe their God in that way as the uh, as literally just pure actuality, pure act. Okay. But then when you start throwing in things like Lucifer and, and all of these, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, that's, yeah, that's true. Um, that's uh, that's that's going to get you into a little bit of a pickle. <laughs> all right. The next one uh, was this uh, PhD Tony. Said, I study paleo sea level, uh, meaning uh, one, one of the hypotheses we have for the Gilgamesh myth is flooding of the Persian Gulf in the early Holocene. I know you have a different interpretation. Uh, well, I've got some justification for that interpretation. There is some archaeology to support the, the flood of Shuripak being the one that the story is based on. And there's And as far as the tsunami aspect of it, there is concordant with that. There is a uh, there's a crater in the Indian Ocean that has Ooh. been dated to that time. So, uh, if that were the case, that would explain the tsunami. But my my and that's that's surprisingly not well supported. And one of the things that confuses me about that is if that were the truth, if that if that event happened right precisely then, it would do a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. Than than just that that flood. one area, yeah, yeah. I mean, but this, I mean, this is a dramatically big crater. I mean, it's much bigger than the one in uh, in Arizona. And just think what a, what size tsunami would come from something that's twenty five times bigger than the the crater in in Arizona. We would have a lot more than just that tsunami. I think. If I might make a suggestion. Hmm. There is a possibility that it's similar to your video on the origin of Jesus, how it's entirely possible to have more than one source that in mythic consciousness and, you know, half remembered traumas <laughs> and the human imagination and the compounding of stories and tales it tend to coalesce and then someone puts it down and there is the story, the myth, the Grimm's fairy tales, the whatever version that finally comes, but from perhaps more than one route. Um, it, you know, they, they've supported the idea of the flood with, you know, shelled uh, creatures on mountains looking at, oh, look, here's seashells on mountains. The mountains must, have, the sea must have risen above the mountains kind of a thing. Um, I don't know. I'm. I just, well, we are definitely going to get there because we're, we're 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 looking now at Genesis six. Oh, oh you're right. <laughs> oh, did we read the last few lines where Noah was born? And let, let uh, me, let me take I, I don't think we got there yet. Yep, didn't read the last two lines. Uh, when Lamech lived, uh, yeah, when Lamech lived 182 years, he had a son. He named him Noah. And said, he will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground the Lord has cursed. After oh, yeah. Noah was born, Lamech lived 595 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Lamech had lived a total of 777 years and then he died. After Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And... There's so much to talk about the, the the flood and the interpretation that I was just about to get into and realize we're right on we're right on the edge of that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So better to leave that, that will for be next long. time. Yeah. And so I am gonna be my wife and I are gonna be uh, uh, out of state and off the grid uh, in at the latter half of this month from the 15th through the end of the month where we're gone. So the only way we can do a second, uh, second Bible lesson this month is if we do it one week from today. Uh, everybody good for one week from today. Good. Should be good with me. It work. It's good with me. Yeah. Fine all with right. me. King Xerxes. Uh, all right. Thank you very much for, for participation. Uh, JR welcome aboard. Uh, <laughs> 
Thank you, everybody. I think I've got all through the. Did, did, I didn't finish the super chats, did I? No, no, no you've got I several left. More. Okay. Yep. Let me run through that. My apologies. Uh, Greeper twelve thirty three said, "Wise men, three day resurrection, seven levels of hell. Yeah, lots of numerical consistencies. Magic well, numbers. Maybe. Yeah. Let's see." Uh, Carrie Taylor for $50. Again, thank you very much. I need, need all the help I can get. Uh, it says, many thanks and praise to Lord Aaron, Lady Lilandra, and the Super Friends. <laughs> <laughs> I want a ring of power. <laughs> uh, they helped me shed my childhood indoctrination and have my eternal gratitude. Uh, what you're doing makes a difference, and don't let anyone tell you different. But thank you very much, especially as uh, I, I need to know that we're, we're making a difference when uh, we are evidently not as my country moves into theocracy. Mm. Yeah, I need all the encouragement we can find there and financial support, too. I did. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. So Super Chat, Carrie Taylor, $50. Thank you. Says many thanks and pray. Wait, I've already read that one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Going down. Next one, Super Chat, Nathan Johnson, $20. I just want to hear my name. <laughs> Thanks for the stream, Nathan Johnson. And the next Super Chat is Benny Olson, another 20 Danish kroner, says, call out to Nathan Johnson. <laughs> and... Uh, Benny Olsen, again, 100 Danish kroner this time. Uh, thank you all. Best from Denmark. Oh. I hope that DK is Denmark, that I'm reading that right. Uh, then a super chat from Benny Olsen. No, I read, read that one. P okay, we're last two. PhD. Tony says, uh, I did not mean to suggest that you had no basis for your hypothesis. I, mm. I, I did not take that uh, as, as an implication. A, a disagreement doesn't mean that that both sides are unfounded. We're good. So no, no worries. And then uh, Chris Decker, did you talk about the fact that the writers of the genealogy did know arithmetic? If you do the math, Methuselah died in the flood. <laughs> uh, I, actually, I hadn't. I charted this in my teens and he did. The Methuselah and Lamech died in the flood. If you chart it out, I am. Um, I, I, I have weird ways of processing okay, my Did emotions. they die it exactly then, or did they live through that? Uh, it, depending on, there's a conflicting genealogy with regard to Lamech that he might have died just, just after the flood. Oh, that's um, awkward. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. But Methuselah, yes, Methuselah did <laughs> die in the flood. And oh. at 969, so hopefully he died happy. Ironically okay. enough, um, <clears throat> the movie with Russell Crowe, depicted this methuselah and lemmick dying in the flood and this was one of the things that uh ken ham had a gripe with when he did his answers in genesis movie review of the flood mo movie noah because uh, i guess methuselah wasn't special enough to be saved well he says it's not in the bible that methuselah died in the flood but yeah you just basically uh, you, you use basic math yeah he, he died in the flood you know what else is There's not in the bible that that one of uh, one of Noah's sons' wives was named Ariel. <laughs> if you go if you go visit the Ark Encounter, they've chosen names for for all of these characters that the Bible didn't find it important to give them names. And so, you know, somebody's granddaughter liked Little Mermaid and decided that one of his his wives should be named Ariel. I was gonna say the Little Mermaid kind of tracks with the whole, you know, sea and the who knows, maybe she rescued yeah, him and got legs. She wasn't all that perturbed about the flood, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. She had a whole new real estate, got to go window shopping. If you know, well, I mean, Andrews and Genesis has never been known for their intellectual consistency, like... so. <laughs> he, Lilander, he what were you saying? Anderson, who wrote the Little Mermaid, was a jacked up fellow, Chris, uh, Christian, you know? He, uh, he hated women because uh, I guess they wouldn't date him. And uh, so the, if you the real straight Little Mermaid, not the Disney version, uh, she she suffers a horrible fate instead of getting the prince. Mm -hmm. And 
it, it, it's all, and if you look at the little match girl, it's so supposed to be this lovely Christian story, but this little girl burns to death with her matches. Mm -hmm. Most of the fairy tales that Disney has hijacked do not have pleasant endings. You know, you yeah. take Cinderella, for instance, where the stepsisters actually cut off their own toes to try and fit into the glass slipper. These were uh, quite a bit more morbid in their original incarnations than Disney presents them. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, self mutilation yeah. doesn't sell money to children. You know, you, you, yeah. don't, get, you, you don't get money from from children coming and watching your movies when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Funny uh, thing, I, I'm I'm old, uh, and when I was a little kid, very little kid, I was given a very old book which was already very old at that time. And it was all of these children's nursery rhymes. And it was all in black and white drawings, except for one color. And you can guess what was the one color in all of these stories. Right. And it, yeah. Yeah. That was the only, the only color that, that book, the book could afford to put in and every story was full of it. Um, that doesn't give you nightmares. I thought it would be interesting <laughs> to mention, in some versions of Cinderella, her name was actually Cinderslut. <laughs> okay. I believe slut used to mean just dirty, so yeah, I see There, will, it, there will be no slut shaming on my show. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I, now we're done with the, with, the, with the Super Chats, and I want to thank everybody for their, their participation, and thank everybody for viewing. And, uh, seriously thank you for the uh the financial support uh all of that and i look forward to seeing everybody next week anybody anybody else want to say something before we go okay. Okay. uh i guess uh <laughs> fo follow me on uh on my own youtube channel <laughs> milwaukee yeah atheists. me too <laughs> uh milwaukee atheists to say and king xerxes <laughs> Yeah, I, I did want to say something to you, uh, Aaron. Uh, I apologize yes. I wasn't able to join. I, I was mowing my yard this morning uh, because it's going to be extremely hot today, and I wanted to get it done while it was still cool. And it takes me a while. <laughs> I have a very large yard. So okay. as soon as I got done, I came in here and logged on. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot to say about the Old Testament. Uh, I suppose once we get into like the uh, Levitical and Deuteronomical, uh, Deuteronomical laws, then I'll have some more commentary. But when it comes to like, the early the early stages of genesis i haven't studied that much uh, my expertise is mostly in the new testament so uh I, well you're going to be very handy quiet. then because i i almost exclusively study the old testament you know for obvious reasons and the <clears throat> earliest bits of it mostly yeah. genesis uh so yeah I, i'm 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 kind of rusty on the new testament matter of fact every time I, I i can't remember how many times i've read the gospels but it's an interesting thing about the bible when you read over something even when you know you've read it before it's all i keep happening across all this stuff that i didn't notice the first two yeah. or three times does that happen with you um i think the reason that happens is because the uh especially with the gospels they copy each other a lot and so your brain just kind of processes out the the copying information. Yeah. You know, once you once you've read the exact same phrase more than once, your brain just skips it. It's no different than if you were to like write out a sentence and include two these. Um, your brain just doesn't process the first one and only goes with the second one, just straight across. Uh, and and what, what we see in the in the New Testament is that the gospel authors definitely copied from each other, Matthew and Luke. Anyway, um, <clears throat> of course, I have had some recent arguments with. Uh, Orthodox Christians that think Matthew was written first, but uh, they have oh, no argument for that. Yeah, that's uh, a that's a pretty rare rare position. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's rare. It's, for it's almost exclusively yeah, theological in nature. It's not historical yeah. whatsoever. No. Yeah. So I mean, I I, I was reading some uh, self-professed biblical scholar, and they they were going over that that position, and I said, okay. Well, so I wrote something that said that it was following what they were saying. So this was, you know, this was written before this one, and then everybody comes on and tells me how ignorant I am. And I just read from these guys. I said, this, this is the case. But then, of course, not everybody agrees on everything. So you, 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 you have to, you have to say everything is according to that guy because you know, shift mm -hmm. the blame, or else you get criticized for being ignorant. Mm -hmm. I got two more super chats to throw in. Uh, 30 Danish kroner from Thor Rasmussen. Thank you. Uh, and then for whatever reason, that shows up twice. Okay, so there was only one to show. Oh, All there right, was thank uh, Tony, PhD Tony had one more there, I think. Uh, um, you oh, know oh, what else sorry. isn't in the Bible? Any suggestion that slavery or rape are sins? 
truth. Yeah, it's funny that. Disturbing. <laughs> Yeah. Subjug subjugation and victimization of other people just seems to be righteous. Depending on who's doing the subjugating and who's being subjugated. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>